Hey everybody, welcome back to another Permaslug video. My name is Jonathan, and today what I'm gonna do is show you how to build a floating back to top button so that if your page content is really long, or in the case of having a one page website, you can have a button that scrolls your user back up to the top really easily. So what you're looking at on your screen is the demo installation I have set up with the functioning back to top button, and I have it set up to show up when you start to scroll down the page a bit. So if I scroll down a bit, you'll see that there's this nice little section down here with the back to top button, and if I go down a little bit further, I'll just demonstrate that the button does scroll you back up to the top of this content. So what I'm going to do now is move into the Oxygen Editor and show you exactly how to set this up. So the first thing we're going to do is actually use the header builder element to create the overlay button like I showed you. And the reason why is because the header builder right out of the box can do both a sticky and an overlay function. And that's going to achieve the layout that we need without having to add any plugins or any custom code. And I love having the ability to do that sort of thing in Oxygen especially for those viewers that are less technical than others. So to achieve that, like I said, we're going to add in a header builder element, which is under the helpers tab here in the add section. So click on header builder. And the first thing we're going to do is actually click the header builder and go back to kind of the top level element here. So we're going to set the stack vertically below to never. And then the background color, I'm going to change to white. Sticky, let's change that to enable sticky header. And this is where you can control when the, the uh, sticky kind of shows up. So in my case before I had this set to 1080 pixels because I was just kind of thought like the standard desktop screen size is of course 1920 by 1080 pixels. So once you scroll down the full desktop screen size, then the back to top button in your sticky would actually show up. So let's change this to 1080 pixels. I want to change the sticky background color to white as well so that it shows up on top of the other page content. And then let's change the sticky above to always. You're going to want to do that because then the mobile device behavior will act exactly like the desktop. Any other setting won't render the, uh, the sticky heading below that 1080 pixels. It will just show up all the time. So it's kind of counterintuitive. Sticky below, set that to always. The sticky header Z index is another important setting here. So make sure that this Z index is higher than any other element on the page so that this back to top button shows up on top of the other content. So the sticky header Z index, let's just set this to something like 25. And then I do want this, this uh, fade in sticky to be turned on. And let's do like half a second to make it really clear when that fades in instead of something lower that might make it look really jarring. Now let's actually click on our header row here, and then we're going to set this sticky display to only show in sticky, and then we're going to set stack vertically below to never, and then hide row below to never. And then background color again, I'm just going to change this to white. If you want to change the height, you can do that, but otherwise whatever content you put inside of it is going to just kind of determine the height of the element, which is totally fine. So you can't actually see the header row, of course, because we haven't positioned it on the page. So let's go to advanced. We're gonna to go to layout and then set the position to fixed. And then we're gonna go just zero pixels from the bottom. And now if we scroll down the page a bit, then you can see that's where the header row element actually appears. And funny enough, because our Z indexes are a little bit jacked up, it kind of hides when I'm trying to get my mouse over that particular element. So now I'm actually gonna add in the button that's gonna behave as our back to top button. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just change this text here to back to top. And then I have another button class on the page here, this one right here, this contact us button. So this class is called dark blue dash button. So let's just add that to this button here. Uh, oh, excuse me, add the class. So dark blue button. And then that makes the button look nice, looks just like our other ones on the page, except I'm gonna add in some margin to this. Let's go 15 pixels top and bottom. And then I'm gonna take this button and put it in the center of my header row element here. Now here's where you're, you're gonna set what element you actually want this back to top button to scroll up to. So let's just go to the top of the page and I'm gonna make this section here the one that is our back to top. So if I change this section name to just top, then what I can do is scroll back down to my button and then I'm gonna change the link to top. Let's go to save. Let's take a look on the front end and then I'm gonna scroll down make my back to top button appear. I'm gonna click back to top and it does take me to the top, but of course it's just an instantaneous jump. To make it much more smooth, all you have to do is go into the oxygen settings, go to global styles, scripts, smooth scroll to hash lengths, and then the 400 milliseconds that it defaults to is generally totally fine. Let's go back to the home page. I'm actually going to delete this anchor link and refresh. And now let's scroll back down to our back to top button. Oh look, there's a little mess up with the Z index, I'll show you how to fix that. So then let's just go to back to top and it scrolls you nice and smooth to the anchor link that you just set. 
So now let's look at that overlay where it kind of messes up behind that content there. You can see that that this um, box there kind of overlays our header, which of course we wouldn't want it to do. It looks like really the only element on the page that does that for the most part. So let's actually fix that. That's gonna be really simple. So let's go back to the oxygen editor here. So in order to fix that overlay issue, you probably just need to play with the page content that you have. And in this case, I'm gonna select this div here that contains all of this content. And then I'm gonna set the Z index to something like five. And then if we go save and refresh on the front end, then that should be fixed. And yes, it is. Is it fixed on the bottom one? It's not actually. So let's just make that same adjustment there. We'll go down and select this div, set the Z index to five again, and then refresh. And now is the overlay fixed in the daily plan and the fixed plan? Yes, it is. So that's perfect. What you need to do is just play with the Z index on these other elements. And sometimes when you set the positioning to, um, you know, something like fixed, relative, absolute, something like that, it's going to mess with the way the Z index and this overlay content behaves. So you just need to play with this a bit. And then, of course, it's really simple. If your Z index of this header, like we set, was 25, then the Z index of the other elements that you want to be behind it just need to be a number lower than 25. So again, just to show you this back to top button does work. As you can see, this is something pretty easy to achieve. This is something that you could actually pop in an all pages template and it could apply site wide that you only have to set up one time. So that's something that's really cool. Of course, we just added this to our home page, but you would basically just take everything that we just did and add this to your pages template if you wanted it to appear across your entire site. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in a future video.